Hey folks, welcome to today's model building workshop. I'm going to try to put the engine together on this KI-27 Nate fighter plane. Uh, you're probably wondering, <laughs> why is it called Nate? Well, that's something I can explain pretty quickly, if I haven't already in the previous episodes, but a refresher. So this is the Nakajima KI-27 fighter plane. Uh, it was nicknamed Nate by the Allied forces. So there was a, uh, a technical wing of the uh, United States Army Air Corps that uh, evaluated and you know, tested the uh, enemy aircraft and tried to keep up to date with what was happening with enemy aircraft. And the short story is, is they had no idea what the names of these aircraft were that the Japanese were producing. So what they did is they just assigned nicknames to help our pilots identify the plane when they're fighting them. So fighter planes were named after boys and bombers and recon planes were named after girls. So that's how it was done. So this one got nicknamed Nate. So this is from the late 1930s. A contemporary Japan had this one, which is a Mitsubishi A5M. This is the Claude. So this was the naval version, similar type of airplane, different scale, but fixed landing gear. This was a carrier-based fighter plane. That's what that one is. So, and this was the predecessor to the infamous A6M which is the legendary Zero, which was nicknamed Zeke by the Americans. That's this one. Now the Zero is a huge leap forward in technology from like the A5M and the KI-27. Not just in that it had the retracting landing gear, but this, this plane was revolutionary in many ways. Uh, this was mostly like an aluminum build. And this was legendary for its maneuverability and its speed and for armament and two machine guns and two 20 millimeter cannon in the wings and this was lethal 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 aircraft and it caused much concern and worry among allied nations until they finally found one uh, that had crash landed during the battles in Alaska there was a battle for the Aleutian Islands way off of the Alaskan coast around 42 43 they tried to take parts of those islands and they found a crashed zero there that was still in good shape they were able to uh, salvage that fix it brought it back to the United States and test flew it and then they learned all the secrets you know of the aircraft and they were able to study how to fight the aircraft at that point anyway getting back to the build so I'm going to try putting the engine together and I know I've got a few broken parts on this. I'm going to see what I can do with this model. If I can get by with some of these, you can see these are like a starfish sort of thing going on here, but some of them are broken. I always think I've got the pieces floating around in the box. No, I do not. So I'm going to attempt to put it on without it and see if it's obvious. And if it's bad, then I may have to come up with some tiny little pieces to make up for those missing parts. And that I don't want to think about at the moment. So, uh, so let's try to file down very carefully. So, yeah, so the problems I'm running into with this model really are how these parts are fastened onto the sprue, or the tree, as this is called. So it, it's been taking some careful cutting to get the parts safely off that tree. 
you remember the last video, I had some problems with these wheel spats, wheel covers, because they put the pin right on the round part. So it made a lot of fun scraping to get that to look decent. And I do have a spot I gotta put some filler on afterwards, which I'm not thrilled about, but that shouldn't be too bad. So I'm gonna try to clean these parts up a bit. Try to do some before I begin rolling the, uh, the video. Because, you know, I've got to remember that you guys have stuck sitting there watching me scrape paint, and that probably isn't the most thrilling thing to watch. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's take a look. 27. How is this supposed to go on? This does concern me, this copper wire, wire assembly that somehow goes on that. And I put that piece on already before I painted it. So there's the engine assembly there, if you can see that. There's really not much to it. But I'm trying to paint in detail it too. What's confusing me right now is how this this is a copper group of wiring, how that's gonna sit on this this engine front. So I'm gonna try to see if I can get some of this together. It looks like there's a notch and a pin set up on these pieces to help sit that. Oh yeah. There is. That makes life simple. It didn't look like it was going to just do that, but it did. So there's enough of a bump here. There's a little tiny pin on the back of this silver piece here. And yeah, connects on. Oh, this is not the best. And I see it's supposed to do. Hmm. Yeah, that's got some issues. All right. So it's not that bad. In that the two missing parts, you know, they're supposed to connect to the cylinders on the engine. It because they at least did the two same ones, it doesn't it may not look quite as glaringly missing. This I haven't figured out at all yet. Um all right, I'm trying to see if there's a noticeable pattern on this engine. Well where that would be. Not really. <laughs> so how would one know where that's supposed to go? If that is to be determined, I guess. Is that supposed to sit there? Wow, I'm not a fan of that design at all. Where does it go? Huh. 
Kind of stuck just scraping paint and plunking it on. It doesn't have the most exact. Fit that I would prefer it had. Not a particularly big fan of how that's going. Because it gives you all these tabs and things to glue on, but it doesn't really specify any notches it's supposed to fit onto, so I guess it just sits. I guess it just sits on there. Kind of free form. Bit vague. I'm not a big fan of the vagueness of that. I'm assuming it just goes like this. What I could try to do is I do have another model of one of these floating around, and I could try to take a look and see if the finished one has any ideas, but that's kind of hiding in a corner. Be right back. Play some music while you're thinking. <laughs> Okay, I'm back. So, yeah, that's what it seems to do. It just seems to sit there, which is kind of strange. But, okay. I'm not going to argue too loudly. It's not going to get me anywhere if it did. All right, so that's how that's going, apparently. Pellet's here. I pre-painted that. I pre-painted some of the powering assembly. I'm going to try to scrape some of the paint off this ring here so I can fit it on. And for painting, I mean, it would be up to you what you want to do with it, but technically the gray color you see of the plastic pretty much is the color that the plane would be. I might use a slightly darker shade, which is, well, basically the paint version of, the, of that color that I have is a little darker. So you notice a slight difference. This is you know standard Japanese army gray that was used at the beginning of World War II. The Navy used similar with the zero there that you just saw. I'm not going to go too crazy on this piece. I'm not going to mount it on. Well, maybe I will. Because 
because I do have this this part painted. The idea was when I put the the engine on the airplane, I didn't want to uh, worry about trying to paint the gray of the engine cowling and trying to mask off the engine itself because I didn't want to get I don't want to paint the engine gray. I just want to get the you know this metal cowling that's covered in the engine gray. So I decided I would just paint that part first. And that way I can just mask the whole cowling off. Yeah, come on. Should be a lot easier to do once it's on the airplane. Anyway. So I have to kind of place that over there, push this through the hole, and put the, there's a retaining cap, number 28, still some pieces left, what are those, oh that's for the cockpit, the antenna piece, okay, might be that the antenna, there's an antenna that goes on, uh, up in here, as the, the glass is going to go on, there is a, a sight that's going to go here for the pilot to aim the gun. Those are certain details that may be better off after painting. Because all of this is going to be gray, and then I'm going to put the glass over it somehow, which sounds daunting, but I think I can find a way to do that. Where is the hub for the propeller? Oh, don't tell me that's the piece there. That's awful. There it is. And it is. Ah. All right, so I have a misshapen disaster of a knob here <laughs> that's supposed to be. Can I fix this? Maybe. Ugh, that's awful. Okay, so there's going to be a problem with that. So the model has a <laughs> mangled. So there's, I don't know if you can see that round part there, right here. That's supposed to be the retaining piece for the propeller. And it is not molded properly it has no opening there's no hole for me to put the propeller through so i may either have to try to find some other type of a device that might hold that propeller in place or that propeller is going to get glued not thrilled with that so that might make this a much shorter video okay well since that's the case i will look to just do this last part I, that i can do for now and i'll have to worry about the surgery a little later this is some Point that goes on the front of the propeller here. Okay, and that. Is probably going to be it for today because the rest of this is kind of a cosmetic surgery issue. And that I'm going to need some time to think about.
Was it on? Was it on? Yeah, it was. Okay, I think that's straight. So the propeller has this interesting sawtooth, sawtooth design disc on the front. Hopefully you can see that. And then that's going to go in here, and I have to figure out if I have anything that might be able to hold this propeller in place. It's possible. I've got spare parts floating around. I may just have to keep digging until I find something that might work. So I don't know. Here's the engine, though, as it is now. This ring is going to go on the aircraft somehow. That goes on there. And then this part's going to go over it. Somehow, like that. And then window goes on over there like so see what I mean whoops yeah there is a lot I don't know exactly where that's gonna go but there's a lot of the top of the uh, aircraft that's gonna be visible through the glass there's very little actually you're gonna see inside of the cockpit I'm gonna angle it there hopefully that'll focus in for you there's very little of the seat and everything that you see inside. You can see more through the engine, but that's going to be <laughs> plugged up by the engine, so it doesn't really matter. But uh, so there's, if you were to do interior painting, I, I would really just worry about doing the, the chair itself because there's nothing else that's visible really through there, even though it's got this really fun, you know, uh, metallic light blue in there. Neat color that the Japanese used, but you can't even see it. Bummer. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to have to try to do some work on that and figure if I can get that to work. And that's where that's going to leave that for now. So anyway, there is how the Nate's going. And I think we'll call it a day there. Yeah. <laughs>